We had an excellent segment with MJF and Adam Cole, and the gist of it was it was a long talking segment. But it was, this, you know what? I hate long talking segments, but this was the exception. I well, this... they had some lines that they threw back and forth at each other. Yeah, we had MJF talking about being a huge fan of Adam Cole and. After CM Punk left, he quit wrestling, but then he went back and saw some Ring of Honor, and he thought it sucked, filled with indie jabronis, but there was one guy who stuck out, and it was Adam Cole, and man, he thought he was great, and he got tapes, and he followed his career. Crowd chatted Mark at MJF for this, (laughs) and he says, yeah, I am a Mark for Adam Cole. He said, I was just so in you, I hope one day we'd face off, but then this guy showed up, he said. What happened to you? He said, used to be the Panama Playboy, now you're the Panama Game Boy. You sit, you play video games, you're pale. Britt leaves the house with your balls in her purse, and you don't have the body and the physique to be a world champion. That's like, uh, how could you do that? Well, you can't. It's a figure of speech. Okay, yeah, because I've never like actually seen anyone's balls in anyone's purse, ever. And then he said, I heard a nasty rumor about you that... You made a jump here because a certain guy at Titan Towers didn't think he had main event potential. That guy's name is Vince McMahon. And I thought he'd lost his marbles. But now that you're standing here in the ring, (laughs) I think he's right. So Cole then gets his chance to talk. And he says, is that all you got? You're supposed to be a great promo and you're just a social media troll. And he buries him for having bad relationships. He calls him a douchebag. He says, "You bring up he my." Can't, he, can't, he can't. He can't keep. He can't keep a woman. He couldn't pass a steroid test. Well, he said, "You bring up my body, but that's because of my body of work." And in fact, if you would like to, if you want to talk about bodies, why don't we go backstage? We can both piss in a couple of cups, and we'll find out who's natural and who is not. And he says, "I appreciate you studied my career, but the fact is, the people in the locker room respect me." I know I've been a bad guy in the past, but they respect me as a human being. And I swear on my life, there's not a single person back there that respects you. And so the fans chant no respect. And MJF makes a comment about, says a lot coming from Keith Lee's manager. And Cole said, wow, you know what? All you do is talk. You won't fight me because you're a coward. So the, the reality Lee's is... Ma- the, the Keith Lee's manager thing was when Adam Cole was... The, the was going to be brought to the main roster because he'd just done everything they could in NXT. You know, he'd been there for years. Vince and Bruce Pritchard, in fact, did not see him as a wrestler. They saw him as Keith Lee's manager. So, um, allegedly Keith Lee's manager, but definitely a manager. Um, and Keith Lee was the person that was talked about. So, um, you know, there you go. And also, he wasn't going to use the name Adam Cole either, but that's a different story. But yeah, that, that's where Budge came in, right? Yes. I, I, the Budge thing is kind of weird. Like, you realize that shortly after Adam Cole left and there was no Budge, we got Butch. So I'm wondering if they were going to call him Butch, and there was like something lost in translation, and they said Budge. Because we basically that's got a, that's an interesting, that's an interesting theory. I don't we, know. We did get a Butch. They renamed we did, they renamed we, him Butch. Yeah, Butch did come up, and um, yeah, yeah, that's true. Right around, like, why would they name not, him Budge? It doesn't even make any sense. No, I think I thought Budge was just something that they made that they that they made up in AEW just to make fun of him. I never thought that Budge was actually the real name that the WWE had for him. I don't even think anyone knows what the name was because Adam Cole himself. You know, I mean, here's the thing: Adam Cole himself was never actually told any of this because if you remember, what happened was when all those stories came, Adam Cole didn't know him. And later he found out that in fact they were true, but he did. He was he, like he never had a meeting where they go, "Hey, we want you to be a manager. We want to name you Budge and or anything like that." But um, when he was, you know, his his contract was running out and he was weighing the offers, you know, obviously the AEW offer was was significantly better than the the WWE offer. Um, AEW really wanted him, and you know Vince didn't see it in him, you know, so. Um, yeah, wanted him as manager. So anyway, yeah, I think the budge thing is just some made-up thing that they did on being the elite, actually. Well, MJF ended up flipping out after Cole turned his back on him, and he said, I'll fight you. And Cole said, well, it looks like we've got ourselves a match, although they did not officially state a date. No, next next Wednesday. Oh, the, Adam Cole and MJF is Wednesday? 
Yeah, Wednesday, non-title match. Oh, well, there you go. And if Adam Cole wins, he gets a title match. I see. Okay. Yes. So the title match we don't have the date of. I missed well, all of the in, lineups here at the end in, of the show. In theory, in theory, um, there is no title match until Adam Cole wins. So then after that, we'll probably get it. So it could be Forbidden Door. Um, I would think it would be a pay-per-view. If it's not Forbidden Door, we're talking about... Um, it's it's they have to wait like see for June July they have to wait two months which I guess they could that seems like a little long so I'm thinking maybe this is Forbidden Door I mean they I, I mean they could do it on TV they you know it doesn't have to be at at Wembley or or um you know in in uh, what's it called All Out in Chicago but um, you know I would presume it's going to be um the, you know the title match could be at Wembley. Yeah, I could, it's it's very possible. We had uh, Matt introducing us to his newest member, Ethan Page. He wants to make him a better person. That's his goal. We had Hook and Jungle Boy versus Preston Vance and Drillistico in a Texas Tornado match. So Hook did this diving punch with a chain wrapped around his fist onto uh, Preston Vance, who just, he's bleeding everywhere. He was bleeding all over the all place. All over himself. He's bleeding all over Hook. He's bleeding all over Jungle Boy. And so finally Jack DDT'd Drillistico on a chair. Jose, the assistant, broke it up. And then Jose takes his shirt off. And of course Hook ends up getting in the ring and he chokes out Jose. And then Jack put uh, Drillistico in the snare trap and submitted him. So fun match. I mean obviously at the end of the day I think we all know that Probably Jungle Boy's turning on Hook. But, Is uh, so? Yeah, this was a good match, though, and the fans were super into it, so I hope they keep him as a team for a while before they pull the trigger on that. Yeah. You know what? I was watching this match, and I was, like, remembering, um, you know, Drew Listico when he was Mystico at Arena Mexico, and he did some of the coolest stuff. The thing is, is that he can't do it here because it's like Arena Mexico's got unique, you know, the ramp and the stage and everything, so... I actually, this will never happen, but I would love to see AEW do a show in Arena Mexico. Just be, it'll never, it will never happen for a million reasons. But um, just to see Drillistico do those when he would run down the ramp and jump to the top ropes and run the ropes and do the big flip dive and everything like that and the stage dives and stuff. He actually was was you know, when when he would you know he he was pretty awesome at Arena Mexico a lot more than he is here. Um, and the, the the thing with him is, is well, he's very good. There's so many guys from Mexico that are on that roster, you know, the, or 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 you know, Vikingo, who's not on the roster, you know, who's not signed to them, but works for them all the time. But you know, Commander and Bandito and Ray Phoenix and Penta and all the, that are that are just, you know, you know, far above him. So he's kind of lost, and he's kind of lost in the shuffle, and will be. This plaque. I'm still yeah. waiting for this stupid plaque. Yeah, Bischoff. Paul and Bischoff or who? What in God's name is going on? Uh oh. Who let you in here? Everybody's favorite. Come over here. You can't even be seen. What? Oh my God. Oh! Happy days here for Brian Alvarez. There it is. Presented oh, to F4W that. Online for passing 100,000 subscribers. Uh huh. I want to give Oreo a hug. Come here, you big fat whale. Yes. <laughs> Thank you to everybody hey. out there. Uh oh. Hey! Uh what are you doing? Brian? Oreo? Hey, oh. I'm taking over the show. Oh no. Dom, Oreo. hit that music, brother. Ah, oh, the hell with it. You know what? It's Monday, it's dance party. <laughs> When can you have this much fun on a Monday on Wrestling Observer Live? I think we may have started something new here. I hate that whale! If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.